Okay, so I may have accidentally started a war against the Rust developers. <laughs> Yo, what's up? I'm Melky. I'm a software engineer at Twitch. And today I'm going to be addressing one of the most popular questions I get, which is which programming language should I learn? And if you listen closely, you can hear the stampede of Rust developers charging their way to yell at both me and you to use Rust. But this video is going to be a little different because I'm actually going to talk to you about Golang and why I think it is the best programming language to learn whether you're new or experienced, because it has a lot to offer. All right, so let's start off with what is Go? Well, it's a programming language, so next section. Go is a compiled, statically typed programming language, open source, all that good stuff, and it was made in Google. But you know what's even cooler? One of the creators is Ken Thompson, the guy who created C. Ever heard of that programming language? Like, what? If you've ever heard anyone talk about Golang, you know it always is associated with being simple, and efficient and easy to use. The creators of Go focused on literally developing and creating a programming language that was easy to learn and easy to read. A lot of people say that's one of Go's like downsides, that's too basic. Like that's literally the point of it. With Go, you will spend less time deciphering complex code that looks like ancient hieroglyphics and more time actually building applications. So you ship more. So why use Go? Why should I use it? Why should I listen to you? Let's just start off with Go is a good programming language. That like, duh, that should be good enough, right? But I actually want to jump into the non-technical aspects of why Go is good first. So what does that mean? You see, the way I like to think of mastering and spending my time learning a programming language is to see if there's even a demand for it. And if there's a demand for it, does it pay? Do people need an engineer with this programming language? And if they do, how much are they willing to pay for it? These are the questions I ask myself. So demand and the pay, the check. Let's look at the job demand for Go. According to Stack Overflow 2022 survey, that was a long time ago, was it? Go was the fourth most wanted language with the second most votes at 10,425 where languages such as Python and TypeScript, which ranked higher, only had 6,564 and 7,956 votes respectfully. Additionally, if you hop on over to indeed.com and search up, I don't know, Rust developer, you'll be surprised to see there's only 847 open jobs. Aww. But if you look up Kotlin developer, it's a bit better. You can see there's 1,458 jobs. But if you search Go developer, well, you'll see this 5,425 jobs. That is five times more than the Rust developer jobs. Ain't that crazy? That's kind of cool. So it's high in demand. Okay, well, what about the money? You know, the software engineering passion, as I like to call it. Go has your back. Don't even worry about it. Stack Overflow has Go ranked as the ninth highest paying programming language with a median salary of $89,204. And you may be thinking to yourself, ninth? Ninth? Why don't I just learn the other eight? Why do I need to learn Go? It's not even the top five. Well, the key here is we have to look a little bit deeper into the data. In the top 10, only four of the program language have over a thousand votes. And Go has the most with 4,567. This means there's more data points. Well, that's kind of cool. What this actually means is there's more jobs that have Go developers. And even with the amount of volume and data points it has, the salary is still in the top 10. This means there's a lot of jobs that all pay high. Now compare that to something like Erlang, which ranked second in salary, but only has 370 responses. And yeah, good luck becoming an Erlang developer. Also, every year, the Golang salary has only gone up. So the future does look very promising. Lastly, Hire.com actually has the salary of a Go developer ranging from 116000 all the way to 220000 with a median of 170 k Now that is some serious money. Okay, okay, fine, Melky. I get it. There's, I can get a job and it pays well. But I want a language that's good to use. I want to love the language that I work with. Well, all right, let's get into the technicals then, shan't we? So when it comes to performance, Go truly stands out. It compiles directly to machine code. 
Now that's a fancy way of saying it's really fast when you execute it, much faster than interpreted languages like Python. It's also statically typed, which hooray should be a standard, but isn't, but yeah, it's statically typed. So yeah, if you're looking to build high performing applications, Go is a fantastic choice. It's super performant. But if you're not convinced just yet, I got another ace up my sleeve. <laughs> Go standard library is one of the best reasons to use Go. What is a standard library? Well, think about every program language and think of all the imports and modules you need to make an application. Go tries its very best to give you everything you need in-house, out of box, no need to install modules or third-party app, no NPM packages. You're not gonna just install, no bloated, no modules. <laughs> the Go standard library offers a wide range of packages and tools for developers to use to create powerful applications. From handling HTTP requests to communicating directly with databases, the standard library has got you covered. So you have to use it. Trust me, it's remarkable. Everything you need is already there. So all you need to do is build. It literally removes the excuses of not building. And last, one of the best, best parts of Go is the community. Rapidly growing, super strong, very active. It's one of the best things to have when you wanna pick up a language. The GitHub repo for Go has more stars than Rust and has more stars than TypeScript, which I honestly thought was a little bit surprising. And this is actually great for beginners because as a beginner, you can get lost and you probably need some resources, some courses. Because so many people use Go, there's so much content and resource available for beginners to pick up and learn Go right away. Okay, so now that you know why you should use Go, let's actually try and demo it. I'm literally gonna show you how easy it is to set up and spin up a server in Go using only the built-in standard library. You can see here, I have nothing. It's just a complete empty directory. Let's just start off. You can do go mod init my project, and then you're gonna do a touch main.go. Every Go file runs through a main.go. All right, in your main.go, you're gonna start off with some things that you have to have. First, a package main. So package main, declare that. That is an every main.go has to be declared with a package main. Next, you can do your import. So like I said, I'm only gonna use the standard library tools. So for that, we're gonna bring in FMT and then we're gonna bring net slash HTTP, which is the built-in HTTP in the standard library. Now the next thing in Go is the func main. Every entry point in a executable main.go file is run through a func main function. You have to have this. So as you can see, Copilot's already telling us what to do. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, so let's quickly make this handler function. All it's going to do, it's going to accept an HTTP response writer, and then all it's going to write is say, hello world, whenever we curl it. Now, another beautiful thing about Go is that errors are value. So you can see here, HTTP listen serve is actually gonna return an error. And there you see that we have an error declared, but not used. We have the error from Go that this is variable not used. So as a lot of memes, we can do the classic, if error does not equal to nil, then we can do some specific error handling. So what we can do is we can just panic on the error. So with that, we have created, and this will spin up an entire server where if we curl it, it will give us a hello world. So let's test it out. And there's actually one thing that we forgot. We should definitely always add a statement that says something that our server is actually working. So now that we have this, this is a complete code that will allow us to actually curl and run our server. All right, so now if we open up another terminal and do go run main.go, we can see here our server has started at localhost 8080. So now if we open up a third terminal and do a curl request, we should see the hello world print statement on our server logs. So we do curl HTTP localhost 8080 slash hello. We submit that, we get nothing as a response, but our server gives us our hello world right here. And it's so easy, it's so fucking easy, just do it. It's it took me no time to set this up. This is why Go is the best. So you want a dope ass language, Golang. You want a good language that pays well and is in demand, Golang. Honestly, do you wanna just ship apps fast and just build stuff, you know, put time in the saddle? Tits, by the way. You should use Go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. How do you like Go? Have you used it before? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe for more. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Join the Discord also right below. Our community is growing. Hope you guys enjoyed it. But don't forget, you gotta do one more thing for me. Well, two things. One, tell your local Rust developer that Go was taking over. And number two, you gotta power it.